Welcome everyone. We are Team Coda Pillars, and we have developed for you uh, a trivia app that we have labeled as Trivia Pillar. The team consists of me, Brian Smith, Sam Bachwick, and Cheryl Lang brings us up in third. Um, before we get into any of the technical details, I think we will have Sam run us through a demo of our app. So as, as you see here, we've got a lovely landing page, which I will let Cheryl explain uh, our UI. Yeah, so uh, we designed the app to resize based on the available real estate. Um, currently, uh, our little nav bar at the bottom of our, our logo, our Trivia Pillar logo. Um, I've called him the Trivia Pillar dude. I don't have a better name for him yet, but that's our nav bar. And um, it displays all the links that we uh, need to access the app there. But if we go, uh, if it gets squished down, um, uh, a ham a little bit more, a little hamburger menu shows up and then that that will uh, it cleans it up. Um, it still has all of our uh, of all of our links right there. And if there's a longer page and you scroll down, that uh, that uh, nav bar will stick to the top so it's always uh, have easy access to all the links. And currently we are on the the home page and so how about we go to how to play? So when you click a new game, you'll have a choice of playing a short, medium, or long game. During each round, you'll be asked a general knowledge multiple choice question and will be awarded points based on how quickly you answer. On the final results page, you'll see the questions with the correct answer along with your score for each round. Now over to Brian for the leaderboard. Thank you. So this is one of our SQL backends which is, we have a short round leaderboard, a medium round leaderboard, and a long round leaderboard that are just individual tables that are relatively duplicated across each other. Um, this is where our admin login comes in. Um, an admin can go ahead and log in, please, Sam. So we do have a profanity filter on the back end that restricts a certain subset of three, little, three character entries to try to limit uh, abuse. However, if there is an offending entry, an admin can log in and delete a high scores entry um, as, they, as they need to. So feel free to just pick one and knock them off the leaderboard. All right. So the leaderboards are set up so that the top 50 of each is displayed. Um, we can change that down the road, but that is currently the limitation. So if you're in the top 50, you're on the leaderboard. Um, Sam, would you like to play a game for us and try to get a top score? Absolutely. So the only way to actually get to the new game from the beginning is going to the home page. So we'll click new game here. And first players will be presented with a drop down menu, giving them an option to play either the short, medium or long game. We'll for demonstration purposes, we'll choose the short game. Um, and so first you'll see um, a timer reading down. It gives you five seconds to read through a question. The buttons are disabled during the reading time. And then we're actually able to answer the question during the 10 second timer allotted. And then as you can see here, your score is logged as you answer questions, depending on whether or not you get them correct, as well as the round number in the game. And so as you can see here as well, uh, you can only choose one answer at a time. Um, you're right, you are able to uh, take some time to submit, but when you actually click the submit button, that is your final answer. Players are not allowed to do that again. Um, it disables the buttons. Um, and uh, it does, does allow to, um, at this point, uh, just go through the full timer rather than actually, um, at this point, uh, stopping the timer early and moving on to the next question. Um, but we'll discuss that later as to what we hope to do with that in the future. Um, so we'll just go through these questions here and you'll notice that um, if you just let it run out, it will keep going. You don't have to actually submit the, click the submit answer button or for it to trigger moving on to the next question. You'll just get no points for that. Um, but um, as you can see here, uh, we've only got a pretty low score so far. You get 100 points per question and uh, the scoring is dependent upon how quickly you answer during the round. Um, so uh, we'll hope to generate, a, get a few more points here, but um, we're on the last question here. Let's see which one. Uh, get that here. So there we go. We finally got into the triple digits. Um, so as this timer runs out, you'll see that the time is up um, and then a game results button is rendered. And so now that the game is over, we can go and see how we did. Uh, not too well, but uh, 
we have a mixture of difficulties of question in each round so in each uh, game. So it gives us a nice mixture. And so we can see here that each question that we were asked during the game, although this isn't necessarily the order in which they were asked, as well as the correct answer for each question and how many points we scored if we answered correctly. Um, and so you can also see here that we are given an opportunity to enter our initials um, and then submit that to the leaderboard um, and also our total score for the round. And so then if we go over the leaderboard here, we can see that that game actually got added to the leaderboard. Um, and we've got, we've got our list of beta testers here. Um, looks like we haven't stepped up too well against them. Um, but that concludes our, our demonstration. Oh, did mean to stop sharing that. Sorry about that. First off, I need to second that I love the name combined, combined with what you guys came up with. That was uh, really, really fun. And I love trivia apps. So this was a really well-built app. I love the um, interface that you guys uh, created. It was really smooth, really clean. Um, so let's get into some of the questions. We're not so done with our presentation. Oh, that oh was I'm sorry. Just a demonstration. <laughs> he just accidentally stopped sharing. Yep, Got sorry it. about that. Just We just figured that we'd show you guys our demonstration first. Uh, I thought maybe you skipped the, the presentation part. I was, my bad. <laughs> Well, here we go, ongoing. Our project backend makes uh, calls out to the Open Trivia database, which allows us to call upon thousands of questions without the need to compile them ourselves. It then stores the results into our own SQL database for retrieval and also handles storing the high scores page for display. The client side of the program takes our API calls, randomizes the order of the questions and answers, and displays them in a readable format. It also calculates the score and sends it to the database to be retrieved later. Now to you, Brian. So just an, a brief overview of the technology we use during this course. The main new one is that external API call to Open Trivia Database. Um, and that really provided a unique challenge that I'll talk about down the road. Um, everything else like Git, uh, React, we covered during, in the course, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, you don't want to hear the, the six group talk about the same technology. <laughs> Sam, would you mind moving forward? Thanks. So I'll just touch briefly on the database schema. So we use a seven table schema uh, with uh, an individual table for each of the score, high score leaderboards. We also had uh, three tables designated for the login functionality, uh, pretty similar to what we had used for previous assessments. And we also use a game storage table. So for the game storage table, even though we actually drew questions from the Open Trivia Database API, um, each time you click on a start the start game button to start a new trivia game, we are we had our API generate uh, seven questions or however many questions depending on the length and store them in that table. And then as players answer, you can update uh, the table after each question with how many points they earned, what whether or not they got correct, uh, and of course what when they answered it. And that is how we allow that that table in the final results screen to display everything that you had. So as we built this, um, everyone's gonna encounter challenges and we're no different. Our first main milestone was actually breaking down that external API call. What was interesting about this is the JSON object that we got back from the API call had a net, another nested object inside of that. So learning how to flatten that out into uh, manipulatable data structures was quite a challenge and was the first big milestone oh. to actually let us use this project. Um, after that, we had to handle the leaderboard and passing uh, timestamps back and forth between the client and the API. And then our last big challenge that we covered fairly recently was preventing question duplication. Early on in our testing, we would sometimes have uh, cases late in the game where you would get a the same question twice in a row. Um, and fixing that was quite a challenge and spent we spent a fair amount of time trying to figure that out. And, we're, and luckily we did so. Another big challenge was to find a way to time our rounds. The rounds are counted by the number of times the five and 10 second timers run. And the score is also calculated based on how much time is left on the timer. The timer is in charge of all of this. And a little quirk we found was that the questions and answers coming from our API were rendering with HTML entities, uh, hard to read substitutions for quotation marks and other special characters. We found an installable package that would decode those entities for us by simply adding the keyword decode 
in the not so simply understood proper place within our code. Um, and now I believe Sam will take the next slide. Certainly will. And so now that we've covered the challenges that we've already overcome, here are some challenges that we'd hope to tackle in the near and longer term. So for the near term, uh, one implementation that we'd hope to include in our application is results screen between rooms. So as we saw during our demonstration, uh, currently you only get to see the final results and uh, actually see what the correct answer was for that question. You might forget even what questions you answered depending on how long the round is. And so we would hope to include a results screen to show after each question uh, what the, what the qu answers were um, that you could have selected from and what the correct answer was and what you put, as well as how many points you earned. Uh, another add-on we would hope to include for the near term, uh, so as I briefly mentioned uh, during the demonstration, uh, if you answer early during a question, you still have to wait for the rest of the time to elapse. Um, and so we understand that that might be a, a slight waste of time for players. So we would hope to add on the functionality of the timer stopping early and the next question generating moving on within the game uh, if you submit a question early. Uh, thirdly, we'd also hope to include uh, adding a score rank on the final results page. So as you saw, when we entered in our initials and clicked submit and everything on that final results screen, um, we couldn't see how we stacked up against the other players on the leaderboard. We only got to see our absolute score and uh, score results. Uh, we had to actually go to the leaderboard page in order to see uh, where we stacked up against everybody else. Uh, we would hope to include an actual score rank uh, on the final results page so you wouldn't have to leave that page. And now, Brian, for the long-term additions. Towards the beginning of the project, we thought about adding green sock animations to our game. Um, however, we found that learning that on top of building this full app was a little too much to tackle inside of two weeks. So we decided to pass that off into a longer term bucket. Um, we'd like to include stuff such as um, we, uh, moving in questions and whatnot, um, per, just adding a little bit more flair here and there, nothing too crazy. Um, we also want to lo look into adding in-game audio for correct or wrong answers. Um, add in web sockets for a multiplayer mode, as well as allowing for custom game modes. For, so if you wanted a really long hard game, or if you wanted a really short easy game specifically about geography, we'd like to implement those features besides relying on three curated uh, preset modes. A little bit about us is um, I graduated from Washington State University last year with my bachelor's degree in computer engineering. So I have a little bit of uh, background in coding. Um, the past six months uh, before joining Dev10 were quite hard to, to find a job due to uh, COVID. And Dev10 definitely gave me an excellent opportunity. Um, and I enjoy learning. And the, uh, you guys have been fantastic for giving me a chance to grow my skill set. So I studied mechanical engineering prior to coming to Dev10 with uh, getting a bachelor's of science and engineering from Hope College, a um, small school in Western Michigan. Um, and uh, even before I graduated from, from engineer, uh, school in engineering, I decided to expand my horizons a bit and look to other career options as far as not just within the world of engineering in the sense of mechanical engineering, but also other types of engineering and even um, computer science and uh, IT. And that's what led me to Dev10. And uh, I'd, I've always had a, an interest in computer science as well. So uh, this was a perfect fit for me and I've been grateful for this opportunity. Uh, a little bit about my hobbies. Uh, I do enjoy trivia, um, believe it or not, as well as uh, other outdoor and as well as outdoor activities such as camping, hiking, biking, and the like, as well as cooking and reading. And I'm Cheryl Lang. Um, my background is in theater and music, uh, costuming, sewing, and proposal writing. Uh, prior to Dev10, no prior technical experience, um, but I had a desire to learn how to create with my computer and I wanted to learn how to code. And along with my job search, I discovered Dev10 and I have been thrilled with the instruction, support and mentoring that I've received here. Um, um, some of my interests, um, singing, I love to sing, read, designing, and I love making things with my hands. And you know, we took a survey and we found that 100% of survey respondents say they feel smarter having played Trivia Pillar. Brian? So we'd like to wrap things up by sending a special thanks out to Paul and Scott, as well as our fellow cohort members for helping us out with this app along the way. Um, and if Cheryl would drop a link in the chat that, so that everyone can go ahead and play the game a little bit, we'll open up the floor to some questions.
That was a wonderful ending. Thank you. You answered a ton of my future questions and uh, I apologize for interrupting an excellent presentation. So um, I have to know, so you, you mentioned uh, some of your fellow uh, cohort members here. Did they participate in any trivia playing yet? Um, yes, after we had the app to play to AWS, we sent it out to a few players, a few family members, a um, few cohort members and let them play. So a lot of their entries on the high scores are, are up there already. That's really, really cool. Um, I, I'm going to have to go out there and try to figure out who, who the, the leader is uh, later <laughs> today. Um, no, this was a, a really fun app and what a great application to end on because it's not only fun to watch and see, but also incredibly impressive that you got it deployed so we can all go out there and play with it now. So uh, I think we know what we'll be doing in our um, farewell uh, meeting after this. We'll be all competing with one another on your, your trivia app. So really, really well done. We've got a few questions here. Um, so Scott wants to know, are the questions selected and stored in an array for each game or some other method? And you may have answered this, but I'm not a developer. So yeah, I so apologize. Sam, could you go back to the SQL schema and just so I can have a frame of reference here to talk about it? So what happens at the start of each game is we generate um, a list of questions, 7, 15, or 30, um, with a game ID tag, as well as a, ver a variety of question IDs and all that other stuff. That game ID is what the client will use to start requesting questions back and forth. So all of the questions, the scores that you get, whether you got them correct or not, et cetera, are all stored in that SQL database and will be created upon the build command at the start of the game. Awesome. And you touched on this a little bit and I, you, may have, you may have answered this. And again, I apologize if I'm, I'm misinterpreting what you said, but um, you mentioned um, flattening the, the JSON data, right? So Scott mm -hmm. is asking about how you handled special characters embedded in the JSON data. So is that that decoded thing? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the JSON array passes it back as that string of, you know, ampersand, hashtag, mm -hmm. 039, et cetera, instead of a quote. Um, so Cheryl managed to get that decoded out with that uh, special command. Well done, Cheryl. Very cool. Would you ever implement game categories such as sports trivia, history trivia, et cetera? Sam, would you like to answer that? Absolutely. So as we uh, touched on briefly in the, ne in the next steps uh, for the longer term goals, we do hope to implement a custom uh, game design or a custom game. Uh, because the Open Trivia Database API does offer that functionality. Uh, it actually is very uh, interactive and customizable as far as what sort of questions you want to generate. There are, there's a host of different categories that you could choose from, as well as uh, different types of difficulty. And it actually has different types of question too, as far as um, we chose to only stick with multiple choice for our, our app, but they're also true and false. So in the future, we'd hope to open it up so that players could uh, compete with just one type of category at a time instead of having to do all general knowledge. Excellent, thank you. I'm just make, we've got a lot of people that love your app, so I'm just making sure I'm not missing any questions in here. Um, how difficult was it to coordinate the questions, answers, timer, score, and round count? <laughs> oh, it was a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> So one of, I talked about uh, duplicate questions popping up, and that was due to the asynchronous calls. Um, what would happen is because the update call was happening so close to the to getting a new question, sometimes they would overlap. So you'd get a new question before the old question was updated. So we ended up having to move some of that workload off of the client and onto the API itself. So now when a question is retrieved by the client, the API just automatically marks that off as being answered, whether or not it ever gets answered correctly or not. Um, that way we don't have any chance of overlapping calls happening and it smooths out the entire ride. Sounds like that was fun. <laughs> Many sleepless nights. <laughs> Shiloh, um, I'm sure. So Shiloh's asking, the timer looks great. How did you handle the changing color of the timer based on the time available? I'll take, I'll take that. Um, I found the, it's a 
it's a downloadable uh, React countdown circle timer. And so it kind of comes with its own stuff kind of built in, built in. And um, you you get to choose your colors, but then you also, it gives you like the, the number of colors you have, then you choose how many seconds you see those colors. Does that make sense? Does that yeah. answer the question? So then, it, yeah, it just, um, it, it, we had it for both timers, so that's why in the in the longer timer you see that that green a lot longer. It doesn't start changing until the same sequence as the five second timer. Very cool. Nazareth wants, I think Nazareth Nazareth wants you to start posting uh, answers. So do you guys have a plan <laughs> to show the user the answer and the game results? Oh, it is. So uh, go ahead, sorry, Brent. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that, yeah, as far as um, I, I wish I had a way of going back straight to the final results from that game. Unfortunately, there's no way of doing that without playing another game. However, uh, at the end of each game, when you go to that final results screen in that table there at the bottom of the page, you will see the question that you um, were the questions that you were faced with during that game, as well as uh, the correct answer. At, at this point, we don't have uh, the option to show like what the player answered. Um, that's something we could also consider implementing in the future. But uh, yeah, the data that's currently shown is the question asked the correct answer. And if you answered it correctly, how many points you were awarded. All right, last question, I think, and then we will get to congratulate you. Could your app be used to submit new questions to Open Trivia? We do not currently have that ability. However, if you do want to submit questions to the Open Trivia database, they do have a form for that on their website if you want to look them up. Um, they have a backlog right now, I think, of 4,000 approved questions and another 2,000 pending approval. Um, and that list seems to be growing every day. Every time I check, it's growing, so. Wow, oh, we got another one. Where are APIs for the app deployed? We have everything deployed out to AWS currently. All right, congratulations, <laughs> you guys. This was an awesome app and you can just go check out the comments for all the kudos you got. So congratulations, thank you for um, everything you guys did.